Okay, well, today I'm going to talk about um, Tokenir, which is a project that Praxis did in 2003 for the NSA. And I had uh, the privilege of being one of the three people who worked on this project. So the, the project arose um, following the NSA being interested in a previous Praxis project, um, the Moltos project, um, another project involving security. And at the time, there was a, a challenge in industry as to whether EAL5 of the common criteria were, was achievable um, cost effectively. And the NSA um, were interested in what we'd done in the past and were looking for praxis to demonstrate in a context that they understood um, how our correctness by construction approach matched up to EAL5. So they contracted us to, um, <clears throat> to implement a component of a system that the NSA had already developed in order for them to get a feel for whether our, our process worked and whether it was indeed possible to achieve EAL5 cost effectively. So the aims were to write software to the common criteria. Just a quick reminder of what the common criteria is. It's a um, set of assurance requirements for evaluation of, say, of security software. And there were seven evaluation assurance levels numbered from one to seven, um, number seven being the most stringent. And the requirements cover a number of key aspects of the software lifecycle, some of them fairly general, others such as vulnerability assessment, very specific to the security market. EAL5 represents a semi-formal development process. So I, I've already mentioned briefly that um, Tokenir was an existing system and we were simply um, developing or redeveloping a component of that system. The original Tokenir system is a fairly complex system demonstrating the use of smart cards and biometrics for access control. And this was developed by the NSA as an unclassified um, demonstrator. And the ID station, as you'll see from the next slide, is just one component of the um, overall Tokenir system. So the, the idea of the original Tokenir system was to provide protection to this secure environment and allow um, secure information to be held on a network of work, workstations held within this protective enclave. The system um, had an enrollment station which issued users with tokens, um, smart cards, and that enrollment station made use of certificates which were issued by a certif certificate authority and an attribute authority. The, the CA certificates were ID certificates. The attribute authority issued certificates containing biometric and privilege information. So those two components were brought together by the enrollment station to create a smart card containing information about the user. So once a user has a token, um, it can approach one of these secure enclaves and the ID station is responsible for validating that user on entry. And the ID station um, reads the token, it um, checks the user's fingerprint against the data on the token, and then it adds further data to the um, token and allows the user to enter the enclave. And with this additional certificate which has been placed on the token, the workstations look for this extra certificate and can determine whether the user is authorized to actually access the data on the workstation. 
So this is a fairly complex system. Um, the the um, project that Praxis undertook was to redevelop just the core functionality of the token ID station, so just the component that um, controls entry to the enclave. And along with controlling en entry to the enclave, it also provided a number of administrative functions. And these functions were assigned to particular with users with particular roles. So the guard um, is able to override the door. The security officer can shut down or change the configuration data. And then an audit manager is able to archive the log. And because this was a demonstration system, all the peripherals were simulated. So I'll just quickly run through what it looks like to the system um, when a user uh, attempts to enter the enclave. So we have here a, a token ID station, and it's already been enrolled in that it has got a number of keys held within, within it. Um, the red, yellow, and the, the green, yellow, and blue keys correspond to public keys of certification authorities and attribute authorities. The red key is the public and private key belonging to the ID station itself. So we have on the outside and on access panel, we have a, a two-line display. We have a token reader and we have a biometric reader. And the display is asking us to supply a token. So we supply our token, which contains three certificates. And these have been signed by um, certification authorities and attribute authorities, which are known to TIS. So TIS needs to have public keys which match the various certificates and allow, allow TIS to check the um, certificates are valid. So the first thing that TIS will do is validate that card, make sure it's consistent, and make sure that it is, um, hasn't expired and things like that. Then the system asks us to supply our finger, which we do. And it now authenticates the fingerprint reading that it acquires from the user here with the data on the INA certificate, so with the fingerprint data which has been recorded on the smart card. And if that works successfully, then TIS will write this fourth certificate to the card, which will allow the user to um, operate within the enclave. Then the system asks us to remove the card. And once the token has been removed, the door becomes unlocked and we can enter the enclave. So that gives you an indication as to the process of entering or of what TIS is doing in order to enable you to um, enter the enclave. <coughs> 